Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about Organic Rankin Cycle or ORC. So let's dive deep into it. So what is the idea here? Well, idea is basically simple thermodynamic cycle that allows you to convert heat into work, useful work. Basically, you take a hot reservoir and then you dump the energy into cold reservoir. During this process, you can extract a little bit of work out of it. Now, ideally, we have very huge gap between this H, uh, basically hot end and cold end. Cold end would be your ambient, hot end would be as hot as you can physically make it. So in cold power plants, this puppy can easily cross 500 degrees Celsius or sometimes stupid level where it's like almost 1000 degrees Celsius. So we make this as uh, hot as possible. Benefit, more work gets done. However, this does work. This is a known system. We have been using it. It's awesome. We have coal furnace. It drives the turbine. Turbine uh, basically we condenses the thing out and then circle repeats. Perfect. Awesome. This is the hot end. This is the cold end. And this is the useful work that you get out of it. Everything is fine. But it does need very high temperature delta, meaning TH and TC has to be far apart. The delta has to be very huge, as in 100 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Celsius, 500 degrees Celsius, or even more than that. So that that's the problem. Not every place you will get that. For example, what if you have waste heat that let's say is output of this product and it's not hot enough, but it's still hot. It's still basically you still have TH and still TC, but the gap between them, basically the uh, ambient is 30 degrees Celsius, the, uh, the hot side is let's say 150 degrees Celsius. That's not hot enough for steam cycle to work efficiently. So what do we do when we have a requirement for low temperature energy extraction? Basically, let's say geothermal well or uh, some engine exhaust or whatever have you, where you cannot have like oomph that you need, but you still want to extract energy. So low temperature delta and low pressure, because these things do work, that's awesome, but they do have very serious pr uh, pressure requirement. And consequence of pressure is cost. You can have a pipe that has, let's say, 10 bars of pressure, uh, you know, endurance. That's awesome. Uh, a pipe that has 100 bars of pressure endurance, that's exponentially more expensive. And a pipe that is designed for 1000 uh, bar, yeah, that's, uh, let's not talk about the cost. That reaches that territory. So pressure low, temperature low, what then? This is the uh, idea that people had that we have heat exchanger, we have it basically hot and cold. And what if we can work something in this where the T H uh, and T C is not far apart, basically even as close as let's say 50 degrees Celsius, then what do we do? And it has to do useful work because you are talking about a machine. Machine has a cost, capital cost. So machine would be only judged by the fact how much electricity does it create. So it has to have useful efficiency. Now be mindful, we are talking about waste heat or low temperature day. and law of physics is very clear on this puppy. If T H and T C is not far apart, do not expect a lot of uh, energy. Expired. That's why we try to make things as as hot as possible. If TH and TC is not far apart, you could literally have gigawatts of energy between like TH and TC if it's only let's say 5 degrees uh, Celsius far apart. It does happen, but you cannot extract it. The law of physics is very clear. Hot should be really hot. Cold should be really cold. So we do target low efficiency because we have to understand this circuit can easily give you 30 plus percent efficiency. But when you are talking about like uh, T, uh, T delta basically, temperature delta is very low, do not expect very high efficiency. So we are targeting 5% plus. Now, if you have recently heard about this ocean, uh, surface ocean thermal energy extraction system, that's the reason why it's not popular anywhere. It does work. It does have terawatts of energy capacity. Problem is, it's only 3 to 5% uh, efficient, meaning you really have a lot of energy potential, but you cannot extract it because this is, you know, making it difficult. So the cost of the building of all that pumping structure and all that heat exchanger, ammonia turbine and all that jazz translates to a scenario where it's like really not worth it. So we really want useful efficiency and everything combined should be low enough where it's like that energy that we are getting from that 5% should be useful. That energy must offset the cost of uh, basically the equipment and that's why low pressure is also key. So this is the idea that some people had. So how do we build this? Well, we start simple. We start with evaporator. Now evaporator is just boiler. Now evaporator adds pressure and temperature. Uh, what is the source? That's up to you. Sometimes it's a uh, basically diesel power plants exhaust. Sometimes it's geothermal. Sometimes it's landfill gas uh, byproducts. Uh, whatever have you. You have something that is hot. Not too hot, but hot. So then you have evaporator here. Why do we call it evaporator? It's not water. It's a refrigerant. Refrigerant, we generally call it evaporators. It evaporates. It gives you basically very high pressure and very high temperature. So plus pressure, plus temperature. Then that puppy goes into expander. Expander gives you useful work, but removes pressure. 
Now your temperature remains more or less the same, not exactly the same, but it does remain more or less same. Then it goes to regenerator. Regenerator is basically a efficiency booster stage. Uh, regenerator dumps it into the incoming stream. Consequence, your pressure remains the same as from expander. However, your temperature does drop. So now you have uh, reduced basically pressure and temperature. So you have reached the normal state and at that point in time you dump it into condenser which is the cold end. So cold end dumps it into ambient. At this point in time basically that one point you have the least amount of pressure and least amount of temperature. Then it goes to the pump. Pump adds pressure. Pressure uh, is like same amount of temperature. Then it goes to regenerator. Regenerator adds a certain amount of temperature. That's Then it gets amplified by evaporator. Now the cycle repeats. Now this is a closed loop system, it's generally always designed with a closed loop system because we are talking about something that evaporates in uh, basically ambient temperature. So it is another requirement, that's why that O in ORC is that organic uh, compounds. Now I have no idea why the heck ammonia is not there, I do get it like chemistry wise but technically ammonia circuit is almost the same thing but here is the same, uh, we generally use refrigerants uh, that are like very sensitive at lower temperatures. So this is how all the system works and generally you target this device to be as cheap as possible because be mindful you're not going to get hundreds of megawatts out of it even though temperature wise mathematically you may have the energy the efficiency of this this low gap is not high enough the efficiency vector is like no you're not going to get too much out of it so you have to be mindful about that now we come to the secret sauce that's the fluid aspect you watch hundreds of videos i have linked at least 10 video down below and all of from different different companies every company will say we have this we have this and not. nobody will ever actually say what exactly the hell you have like nobody says that that's the secret sauce now what is the requirement well from laws of physics the requirement is low boiling temperature that's a must you start with there and then you figure out what you need to do and because of the quantity involved you could uh, let's say you are talking about let's say 22 megawatt power plant you are talking about some serious i mean like some serious amount of it so nowadays people are seriously focusing on odp potential basically ozone depletion present potential has to be low or almost as close to zero as possible so that's also a requirement nowadays and in uh, multiple european countries is required by law so you cannot use something that will destroy it so what are the options? Well, I have figured uh, out three options. There could be hundreds more, but these are the three that I have managed to narrow it down to. So you have R134A, uh, this refrigerant, and then you have R245FA. I have no idea who came up with these names. Uh, that is that uh, HFC gases. And these are generally used when you are talking about something that is lower than 150 degrees Celsius. The hot side is less than that. At that point in time, these two gases are generally preferred. Now, again, these two gases also have different uh, characteristics, but it's up to you which one suits you better then when you are talking about something big oomphish when you are talking about like some serious temperature or some serious amount of work butane is used which is uh, r600a this puppy uh, this is generally used for things that are hotter than let's say 150 degrees celsius i have linked the video down below where uh, turkish yeah a turkish geothermal plant is using this puppy that is around uh, 22 megawatt now you have to understand because of that low efficiency the actual useful amount of electricity you're going to get would be very low so how do you keep the cost down well most of the things are common you can reduce the pressure for example let's say uh, one generator that is working on r134a gives you 10 kilowatts of electrical energy from your waste heat that's awesome but it costs x okay now you have r245a now this puppy is basically gives you only 8 kilowatt of energy however the pressure requirement goes from let's say every piping has to be designed for let's say uh, 15 to 50 bars versus 5 to 10 bars you will find the cost to be exponentially cheaper so people may be like hey spending more do i really get that electricity worth if yes, they will do that. Like let's say they are in Germany and electricity price is super high. They may be like, yeah, just uh, I'll pay for it. But in most places they may be like, you know what? I'm going to go with 8 kilowatt generator, which is like, you know, cheaper. So be mindful. These things are working on uh, waste heat. So nobody is uh, like, you know, expecting too much out of it, but they are expecting enough where the cost is not painful. So that can be done. And when you are talking about geothermal power plant, you can't run a steam system, practically speaking, because the temperature delta is not enough. You have to do so many extra steps that are like, is it really worth it? So butane is generally used in those sort of point. So be mindful. There is no solid answer. It's like, oh, this gas. No. That's why every company is very tight-lipped about it. And be mindful, when I'm talking about these three gases, it's not necessary you're going to get uh, solo gas. You may even have a mix of this. You may have something very tailor-made. So yeah, that is the magic sauce of it.
So basically, the temperature delta between your hot source and cooling area that defines uh, which gas you will use, and the grand total temperature of the heat source defines how other things will work and how much piping you want to spend. So what are the use cases of it? Well, there are many, many, many use cases, but it's generally used where you have enough waste heat be mindful i have specified if your waste heat itself is let's say uh, one or two kilowatts you're gonna get 100 watt out of it at best so realistically it does not make sense to invest that much money and get so little power out of it so it has to have enough waste heat to justify it you are talking about like waste heat of uh, at least few megawatts of potential then you can get few kilowatts out of it and then it's like financially viable if the generator design is done properly so you have to figure these things out or sometimes when you are dealing with low heat source itself meaning the source itself even though you are creating the source it's not recovery it's the source it is not hot enough for example some geothermal well that is not deep enough or does not have the hot enough pocket yeah you are stuck there in those sort of point uh, you're gonna have to use these things cement flower plants they love this because cement companies create very very hot byproduct and uh, like clinker cooling can easily reach around 150 degrees celsius or even 200 degrees celsius and then you are talking about like their main chimney that could easily reach 400 degrees celsius at that point in time shut up take money and the total amount of energy is huge so even if you are only extracting four or five percent out of it that's worth it that's like shut up take money that's there then you have anything that has continuous and serious amount of industrial waste heat stream if you have industrial waste heat stream shut up take money now uh, what about sources sources is generally geothermal solar biogas from landfills that's where they uh, generally use this like this is a example of where you have a diesel generator power plant and that power plant exhaust goes into this uh, i think i'm pretty sure i have linked the video down below and this was like very low power as in like barely uh, half meg uh, megawatt but the generators are like multiple gigawatts but again the cost is low enough where they justify that half uh, basically gigawatt uh, megawatt and then you're like 500 kilowatt is still 500 freaking kilowatt and if you are getting that from waste without increasing your fuel consumption that's like shut up take money if this generator capital cost is low enough which it is that's why people use this so be mindful of, be, be aware of the economic layer of it that's why i always have this slogan physics engineering economics economics is the daddy the base layer so can we make it more efficient absolutely can uh, should we do it well try it if you can make it cheaply the moment you touch efficiency cost goes lol so at that point in time nobody does it so these are the use cases of it so what we can expect in the future well here's the thing the world right now as we stand is a scenario where fuel prices are going up energy prices are going up inflation is going up so meaning the only salvage that you can do in this scenario is increase the efficiency be it your worker efficiency be it your power plant efficiency or be it your uh, basically industrial uh, you know plant efficiency efficiency is the only thing that can salvage you here so it's becoming more and more energy uh, conscious and energy uh, basically recovery becomes more financially viable so imagine this way let's say you install this plant it's only giving you uh, like you know few kilowatt but government increases your electricity tariff which does happen over time you can trace it out you can at that point in time your roi basically how much money you poured into this puppy the return on investment will be oh instead of like you know few years it will be like hey in few months it paid out because the you know rate plan increased so much so people do invest in these things and as these three things are like you know increasing the cost of basically running a business uh, salvaging every little bit of energy financially now makes sense that's why even though these technologies are ancient we had this like from like 1970s we never truly adopted them because it did not make sense it's like yeah you are giving me five kilowatts of energy per day and uh, if i buy that amount of energy that you're gonna get before maintenance before shutdown or before breakage I can spend that amount of money on to electrical bill and I'll get more because your plant uh, system is expensive. People are like, yeah, why would we do that? Now, this is becoming cheaper, not because this is cheaper, it's simply because electricity is getting more expensive. So it makes more sense now. So more and more people are jumping into it. And the more the most cost effective area where you can get the most oomph out of it is fluid research, basically which fluid you're going to use. And that's why I specified that's the secret sauce. Nobody is going to exactly tell you this is the fluid that we're going to use that's the secret part uh, the only plant i have figured out is the geothermal plant that they flat out say it's a butane that we are using flat out everywhere else it's like it's our proprietary mix it's our this and all that we don't know
and so be mindful you do expect to see more of this why uh, this is like in morocco plant where you have orc plus system and they are running on solar and there are some other in brazil also where they are running on solar now like why the heck they are running on solar on this rather than silicon well solar silicon is becoming cheap now last 10 years ago it was not the same and there are other places for uh, where silicon products are not as cheap as you may think like in india we have a lot of solar and water companies not every place has that and uh, basically glass steel these things are exponentially cheaper compared to silicon technology so if you have let's say a giant solar farm you collect all the heat you dump it into a heat sink that heat sink absorbs it let's say be it by oil be it by salt it absorbs it and then you run it open rank and cycle out of it your efficiency is lower absolutely lower however it can run 24 into 7 if you design your uh, plant right you can literally have a scenario hey this solar plant is if it was like pv plant it would be let's say 20 gig, uh, gigawatt now it's only 5 gigawatt but it's 24 into 7 5 gigawatt now again change the number range ratio based on the real world efficiency but the idea is the same many places would rather have a low power but continuous power rather than having like the most bang for buck they can have so that's why these make actual sense so this was my presentation on basically uh, op uh, organic rank and cycle. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst a friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you are free. And as always, thanks for watching.